So, Kedar Nag, our next speaker, is the local boy from Bangalore. <laughs> yeah, but he works in he works in Mysore in Queenix. <laughs> so, well, he loves to play table tennis, and he loves to travel alone. Like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, <laughs> right? And uh, I was asking him, so man, you know, tell me something which people don't know about you, what you'd like to share. And I got the most astounding answer. You know what? I've been married twice to the same woman. And I was like, all right, interesting. I mean, usually we don't make the same mistake twice, <laughs> but <laughs> what I was about to ask him, like, hey, what is the secret about? And I said, hey, man. No questions asked, no lies told. <laughs> Kedar Nag, rock the stage. Yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, hey everybody. Uh, yeah, so today I'll be talking about uh, you know gaming with Golang using APIs. Uh, before I begin with my actual presentation, you know, I would like to just mention a couple of things that actually made me get into Go. You know, the language actually comes with a lot of uh, features such as concurrency, you know, it provides Go routines, channeling, uh, which makes the language actually stand out. And uh, it is actually very good to build a service oriented application, which one of a kind, which we have currently built. And there are a couple of uh, other features such as testing, which I really love because I am from a Ruby on Rails background. I'm still working in Ruby on Rails as well. And you know, for testing, it's kind of a pain because I have to use a lot of gems. And for me to understand gems, it takes me months. Uh, the library here is kind of uh, very easy. It's documented really well. Uh, even though the language is still in the initial stages, uh, the documentation is pretty good. So yeah. so. So the reason for us to build a game was, uh, you know, during last year's GoForCon uh, India, uh, I was very new to the language. Uh, I couldn't say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say new. I had no idea what the language was. So I just came here and I saw a lot of speakers talk about the language, you know, their thoughts, their experiences. And uh, many speakers, uh, you know, they mentioned specifically saying, at that point of time, the language was very good for building service-oriented applications such as you know, which we, we make use of APIs. So once I went back, you know, I kind of uh, wanted to build a language. I'm sorry, I wanted to build a game, learn the language. And for me to actually learn something, the first thing that I want to actually build something in that language is a game. The reason is, see, for the past, uh, you know, I think close to 15 years, I've been a hardcore gamer. I've played all kinds of games. So. I've, I've always had this idea of to understand how the ex how exactly the games are designed you know how do they how do they actually work I, it is really fun to play but to design something and to understand how they work is it's totally in a different level so I wanted to build something that will actually keep me focused so that I, I, I shouldn't lose interest halfway down the line so that was one of the reasons why actually I went ahead and you know I built a team we had a team and we built a game we built a mobile application at the end. Uh, the reason is, uh, you know, e everybody nowadays, you know, we use mobiles for various purpose. You know, we, uh, and especially in metro cities, you know, to travel from one place to another place, it takes hours together. So, you know, if you have a mobile in your hand, you can do a lot of things when you're actually traveling. So building a mobile application was a suitable choice for us. And that is one of the reasons why we actually went ahead building a game for mobile. And we only have developed it for iOS as of now, and it's not available for Android. Okay, so this is kind of uh, hard to explain. It's uh, it's a plan, right? So it never goes the way you plan it. Uh, we wanted to build a game, so you know that domain is very huge. You know, when you look at gaming industry, you know there are various kinds of games that come out, from action to adventure to strategy simulation, board games, there are a lot of things. And I have this crazy colleague who works with me and you know, he, he aims there. You know, he dreams of things where, you know, he wants Unicorn the first step. So he's like, he wanted to build a first player game, first player shooter. So I was like, 
I was in terms of still trying to understand if we can actually build something similar to dots, okay? So we kind of narrowed it down to a lot of games. We discussed and eventually we decided that we'll actually build something not that complex and also it should help us understand the language. So yeah, we built something similar to a board game. And before we built a board game, again, you know, we had a Con we had a confusion between what kind of board game and it narrowed down to you know chess and scrabble uh you know when the discussion came down to that uh you know chess and scrabble both the games are very similar you know when you you know it requires a lot of uh, logical thinking and you know it is really hard to challenge a person when you are when he or she is at the same level as you are the only reason we went ahead and chose Scrabble was, you know, uh, we thought the logic of the Scrabble is a bit more complicated compared to chess. I, this is my opinion only. And another reason was, you know, Scrabble is, a how many of you have played Scrabble? Awesome. So, yeah, so I'm then I think you guys are aware. Scrabble, you know, it's a word building game and it, it has a lot of words. So, so we wanted to actually put all these words into, into a database and try and understand how exactly our APIs would actually interact with the database. And we wanted to know how is the performance of Go with the database. So we also, that was one of another reason why we actually chose Scrabble. Yeah, so Scrabble is born. The thing is, uh, once we actually develop a game, uh, we actually designed it to be a two-player game. And Scrabble is a turn-based game, right? So what happens is every time a player actually plays a turn or whenever he, he places a word, what we are doing right now is we're actually sending the entire content and its indexes in the request of the body, okay? So every time we send that request, we are checking against our database if that word is valid or not. Valid or not. Only if the word is valid, we're actually going ahead and we're actually calculating the score and the turn shifts to player two. So this is the procedure what we have actually followed for the game as of now. You know, this is a logic, uh, this is just an overview of how exactly our game is working right now. This is, there is a lot of in-depth other things which we couldn't actually add it in this slide. So, you know, if you can actually, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna have a look at my laptop because I have short sight, I'm sorry, I forgot my glasses. Uh, thing is, see, if you observe on the left side of the screen, that's where the game begins. And uh, once you're into the game, you have three options. Uh, one is uh, where you actually have the option to log in as a player. So that's the registration screen where you actually can register two players. And once you are registered, the actual game begins. Okay? So by default, right now, we have actually made player one to be the player who starts off the game. And the game begins, and the player one is given seven tails. So that's how the game, the rules of Scrabble are. So seven letters are given to them, and they're supposed to frame a word. And the game goes on, you know, once the player places a word, it is again checked against our database, and a certain value is given to player one. And then it's the turn of player two, and the same thing is repeated for player two. So this, ga this game goes on until all the tails on the board are filled. So at that point of time, we actually calculate who has the highest points and the person with the highest one is declared the winner. So this is what we have actually accomplished as of now. So I would just like to share the video uh, of what we have actually developed. So. So, you know, it's it's a three minute video, so I'll just uh, help you guys how it works. So, you know, two players have registered, start game. This is the board. The UI, the front end is done by iOS people and it's, they have used Objective-C. So initially, player one is given the option to actually start the game. So he's gonna place the word. So always the game begins from the center of the board. So this is the rule again from the Scrabble community. So it's basically it's like a double word. See, whatever points you get out of those four letters will be multiplied by two. So I think it was six points, so it got multiplied by two, and it's 12. So if the word is valid, the turn switches to player two. And now the thing is, you know, the player one, uh, the player two has to place another word from where the player one has lef left it out. 
So he, it's more like a continuity. You can't just frame it wherever you want it. So right now that is what is happening. And yeah, so go is another word. Yeah, so the game goes on. So every time we are actually clicking on play, you know, we are actually having an API which uh, calls our database to check if the word is valid or not. And we have another option that says restore. What happens is see, uh, the restore API, what it does is see whenever you actually have a word placed and if you feel actually the word is not valid and if you want to reframe a word. So once you hit restore, all the tails will be put back into its place. So you can actually place the word without losing your turn. And skip, skip is something where, you know, if you're not able to frame a word with all the alphabets that are given to you, you have to turn out your option to the next player. So when you hit skip, you lose 10 points and then another player chance is actually given so he can continue the game. So this game for now, we have actually designed it to work till 30 points uh, so that, you know, it doesn't drag on. Okay, so whoever reaches 30 first will be actually declared the winner. Uh, I'll just... I think that should be the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my slide for that. And the enhancements what we are planning for, uh, you know, we are trying to improve this game. It's still not done, actually. Uh, you know, the game is kind of uh, in a phase where a lot of improvements are needed. Uh, we still don't have concurrency in place. Uh, so we are actually trying to put concurrency in the picture so that we can achieve multiplayer. And we want people from different locations to actually challenge each other and play the game. That is one feature. And right now, it's just two players. So two players have to be in the same location to, the play, to play the game. So another feature what we want to add is where you can actually play against a computer. So uh, that's player versus computer. So there is already uh, uh, there is already a library for this uh, built in a different language. We're actually trying to uh, write an API to wrap that around so that we can actually make use of it in Go as well. That is one thing. Uh, yeah. So that was my slide. Thank you all. You said the reason you started with Go is because you liked uh, the concurrency and all these features. Exactly. So how really did you uh, design this? I mean, did you use concurrency and all? So I was actually looking forward to that aspect. Okay. So, so I, what, I'm, what I'm are the okay, what are please. the Go features that you really used to do this? And what is it that you were able to do with Go that you thought would have been difficult with other languages? Okay. Good. So the thing is, see, uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm from Ruby on Rails background. So I wanted to actually learn Go in a way where I could relate to Ruby on Rails as well. So initially, uh, we have this language written in MVC architecture. So we have the controller model structure. That is one thing. And concurrency was something uh, initially which we didn't learn. So we, we had already started building the game without concurrency. And this is something we recently started understanding of how concurrency Go routines work. So we are actually planning on revamping the entire thing. and put concurrency into picture and then we want to actually make this game a bit more playable. So that is what we actually achieved. So just to interrupt there, in a, in a single player mode, are you going to use go routines to actually calculate the next word and the score and stuff like that? Yeah, exactly, yes. Uh, so like since it's a server side and a client side app, what, I mean, it wasn't obvious yeah. from your presentation. If could you please expand on where and what all component uh, exactly go is being used? And where else are you using some other tech? Because that it wasn't obvious. So okay. Uh, okay. So see, this this project started off, you know, around nine months ago, and at that point of time, we were really new to Go, and uh, we haven't used a lot of concepts from Go. We are kind of making use of certain SDKs that are available for notifications, and creating pipelines and stuff. But in this, uh, we are not actually using majority. All the code is written from scratch. We are not using any of the standard libraries. The only one which we are using is for testing. And we are making use of benchmarks uh, for evaluating the performance. So other than that, as of now, we're not using any of the other components. 
Uh, uh, we, uh, we are using Postgres. All right, uh, one last question. Yeah, uh, nice presentation. Thanks. Uh, what are you doing for the UI? How are you generating the UI? Is it like, are you calling Coco API and then you're going to write it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't get that. Uh, how are you doing the UI for the game? The UI. What is the UI? UI is Objective-C, so iOS. Uh, uh, yeah, so you're calling the Coco API, is it? Yeah. Okay, uh, have you used any other libraries or something? Uh, no, 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 no. All right, I'll just give that add-on question there. Go for it, man. Uh, hi. Uh, regarding the single-person mode, I mean, uh, user versus computer, how far is the intelligence being compared with the uh, next mode, and uh, how do you relate it with the intelligence? Yeah, so the thing is, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to user versus computer, you know, the, uh, the problem is when a user is playing, you know, he actually understands how, what is his move, and how he calculates it, right? But when you talk in terms of computer, it actually kind of has a snapshot of its previous move and it kind of recognizes what its next move is. It's not like how we think. So there is a concept called Maven which is already available. So we are actually trying to build a wrapper around it that is still in progress because there are three different strategies which it involves. We are just bypass just one strategy. We are still trying to break to the other two strategies. So uh, is it really predictive analysis that is what you are doing? Uh, yes, to an extent, yes. All right, thanks, Kedarnath. Thank you. And I'd say, I give it up for him once more. That's his first talk he's given in such a large audience. Well done. All right, so.